This is R2D Tech and in this video we're going to be taking a hands-on look at the 2020 iPad Air, so stay tuned. Now this iPad is going to look pretty familiar because it basically takes its entire design from the iPad Pros. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because there are definitely a lot of upgrades here over the previous iPad Air as well as it being significantly cheaper than the iPad Pros. So let's take a look. So in terms of the design, as I said, it's going to look pretty familiar. It's basically the same design as the iPad Pro from two generations back. Um, now there are some upgrades from the previous iPad Air. So starting with the uh, display, it's going to be a little bit larger up from 10.5 uh, inches to 10.9 inches, which sounds small, but there definitely is a noticeable difference there. So that is a good thing. You're also getting much thinner and also uniform bezels, which makes the whole display make a look much nicer in my opinion. Um, it is also incredibly uh, light at just 458 grams, which is crazy. Incredibly thin at 6.1 millimeters, which is incredible. Um, and another bonus is that it's made out of recycled aluminium. Uh, so that's also a good thing. You can also choose from more colors now. So you've got the classic um, gray, space gray, but then you can also choose from rose gold, green and blue as well. So that is uh, also good. So onto the specs, uh, this iPad is going to be equipped with the A14 Bionic chip, uh, which Apple claims should offer 40% more performance um, over the A13 Bionic chip, as well as 30% more graphical performance. Um, so that is good. However, once again, I think um, processor performance isn't something that matters too much when you're using a tablet unless you're using it for things like um, video editing, possibly gaming or music production. Um, but if you're not using those, then the, process, the processor performance doesn't matter too much. As you would expect, you are also going to be getting incredible battery life. You will get a good few days of light use out of it and possibly even more if you get the um, keyboard as well, which has a secondary battery in it. So uh, no complaints there. And I think it is really good. There are two storage options. So you can go for the 64 gigabyte model or the 256 gigabyte model with uh, no options in between. It would have been nice to have maybe a few more options, but in my opinion, you're definitely not going to need to go over um, 256 and possibly not even 64. So those options are probably fine. So onto the display and as we've mentioned, it's 10.9 inches big. Uh, it's got a resolution of 2360 by 1640, which is definitely sharp enough in my opinion for a screen of this size. It's got a um, refresh rate of only 60 hertz rather than the 120 hertz, which you get on the iPad Pros. So there will be a noticeable difference there if you have used the iPad Pros, but I think to be honest, 60 hertz will be fine and you'll definitely get used to it. That's what's on most smartphones right now. So I think it should be fine. Also in terms of brightness, it will reach 500 nits, which is definitely bright enough, uh, even in uh, direct sunlight. So no complaints there. So looking around the iPad, like on the iPad Pros, it's going to be charging through the USB-C port and you do also get a headphone jack as well. Um, what's interesting though is you, you are not actually getting the uh, face ID sensors on this iPad. Instead, you get a fingerprint reader, which doubles as the power button. Now, I think that is a little bit annoying because face ID on the iPad, I think was really useful. Um, the fingerprint works fine and it's really responsive, but it's just not quite as good as the face ID. It's not as convenient in my opinion. Unfortunately, you're only getting two speakers, unlike on the Pro models where you get four, but they are still really good speakers and they, they reach um, a loud enough volume to watch uh, movies and TV and stuff. 
For the cameras on the rear, you're getting a 12 megapixel wide lens. You are missing out on the ultra wide lens that you got on the Pro model, as well as the LiDAR sensors. But I think they were pretty useless in my opinion. I really don't think that um, many people are getting an iPad for photography. So um, I don't think that's a big loss. You're also getting a seven megapixel um, selfie camera, which should be fine for video conferencing, Zoom calls and everything else. In terms of the software, it's going to be running uh, iPadOS 14 out of the box, uh, which I think uh, is really nice to use. My one complaint is that you can't seem to have widgets anywhere you want um, on your home screen yet, unlike on iOS 14. That's a little bit weird because they are um, pretty similar and I would have thought that um, all the features from iOS 14 would come to iPad OS 14, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Hopefully in the upcoming updates that might be um, solved. If you don't know, iPadOS uh, is basically an adaptation of iOS better suited to tablets because supposedly more and more people are using tablets for work instead of laptops. Um, so iPadOS basically adds a better mouse support and keyboard support um, as well as a more desktop friendly environment for doing work. Now moving on to the accessories, of course the main ones are the Apple Pencil and the Apple Smart Keyboard. Now I only have the um, Pencil so I'm going to focus on that and to be honest it's a joy to use. If you're interested in drawing or um, photo editing or anything like that really, it is incredibly useful and really precise. It is a pretty similar experience to um, having the original Apple Pencil with uh, some of the older iPads. Apple claim they've improved things like the precision and the latency, but I can't see a no noticeable difference. Um, so if you do have one of the older generation iPads, just this feature prob probably wouldn't be a reason to upgrade, but it is still really um, incredible and fun to use. The pencil uh, conveniently attaches magnetically to the side of the iPad and it also charges that way. One thing I should mention is that over time um, you will start to see scratches on the side of the iPad um, where the pencil is, which is a little bit annoying. You might want to get a case to cover that up. Um, but there you go. The pencil is a little ex expensive at just over a hundred pounds, um, which I think is pretty expensive for a stylus, but um, it's Apple, so you kind of expect that from them. But there are other alternatives you can go for, um, which are cheaper, but they won't have the same integration that the Apple Pencil has with the iPad. So bear that in mind. So this iPad is going to be starting at £579, which is around £100 more than the previous generation of the iPad Air. So a little bit more expensive there. Um, but I think for the um, extra features that you're getting, I think £100 is worth it if you were considering getting the older model. Um, now it is significantly cheaper than the Pro models which are upwards of a thousand pounds and for almost everyone I, re I would recommend going for the Air because it is around 400 pounds cheaper. Um, I don't think there are many features that the Pro models offer um, that are really important. You might want slightly more graphical performance which the Pro models do offer but I think from almost everyone, the iPad Air 2020 is going to be the one to get. That's it from this video. If you liked it, please press the thumbs up button. If you loved it, please consider subscribing.